Today I want to take a look at lapel microphones and in particular the Primo microphone capsules which are quite inexpensive but have a very low inherent noise level. That means that they produce very little hiss and generally speaking give a very good sound. Now the microphone I'm using at the moment is the COS 11X. Now this is a professional microphone, it's quite small, it has a very nice sound but it has a signal to noise ratio of 66 dB. Now that's still a very professional level of noise and this is used in drama productions and all sorts of uh, film work. But the Primo microphones can have a very low noise level of uh, up to 80 dB. The equivalent omnidirectional microphone from Primo, the 172, is virtually silent in uh, terms of inherent noise. Now before we go on to look at the Primo capsules, I just want to explain a little bit about how these microphones work and the difference between a two and three wire configuration. Now if you have a three wire microphone, that is using all three connections from the tiny preamplifier that is built into the microphone capsule. There's a power supply terminal, there's the signal terminal and there's the ground. But you can wire these capsules to work from a two pin connector. In other words, if you want to use direct power from a 3.5 millimeter jack into a small camera or a digital SLR, then you have to drop the source connector to ground. And that has two effects. One, it changes the sound of the microphone, its actual timbre. And the other effect is that it actually increases the output level of the microphone by about 10 dB. So that can be useful, but uh, the real problem is that it changes the sound because the signal is output in negative phase rather than positive phase, which means that a positive uh, pressure on the microphone capsule produces a negative movement in the loudspeaker at the end of the chain. Now, you can change that if you wish by actually uh, inverting the signal as you record it or indeed afterwards when you edit it in Audacity or in your editing program. So let's just have a look at that. I'll now go into uh, the mixer and change this signal from normal to uh, inverted phase. So that's inverted phase and you can hear immediately that the sound is much deeper, much rounder. So let's now move on to look at the Primo capsules themselves and how they work. So this is the Primo 172, the microphone that has the really high signal to noise ratio of 80 dB. And uh, it has a very nice uh, crisp sound which will cut through uh, most things and uh, can be used straight from the recording. But uh, as we said before, you can change that and go into inverted phase, which will sound much deeper, much richer and uh, much heavier. So it depends what you want to get. But for my money, I think the Primo microphone is equally as good as the uh, COS 11X for ordinary interviews and mounting on the surface. So going back now to its uh, standard recording, which is inverted because it's a two-wire microphone, uh, the, ch the sound will change depending on where you put it on the chest, how close it is to the mouth, where it is on the chest cavity that vibrates, and it will also change depending on whether you use a windshield. So I'll now pop this small foam windshield on the microphone. Now I've left it in the same place on my chest, but you will hear that the sound has changed just a little bit. There's not a great dramatic change, but windshields do alter the nature of the sound just a slight amount. Now if I move this down, so there is probably where I would normally place the microphone, and that sounds reasonably normal and sufficiently bassy even on the uh, inverted setting, in, inverted uh, phase that's coming out of the microphone naturally. If I put it further down it will become probably a little bit thinner and more open but again it uh, depends where you are using it. That's normal phase and I'll now go into inverted phase where it goes deeper. So you have the choice there. 
Now the next microphone I want to look at is uh, one that I've built up myself and it's not in a proper casing, it's uh, uh, in a little plug casing. So this is another Primo capsule, the 258, which is an omnidirectional capsule like the previous one, but much smaller. This capsule is only uh, six millimeters in diameter, whereas the previous one was 10 millimeters. But even so, the, the sound from this can be quite pleasant. Uh, probably need it a fraction higher on the chest, uh, halfway between the second and third button. And there wasn't a microphone casing for this. You can put it in the larger casing, which the 10 millimeter one goes in, and there's a, a rubber bush to hold it in there. But what I did was to get uh, a 3.5 millimeter jack plug like this, and uh, took away the plug part and used the shell to mount the microphone in the top. Now, in order to make it smaller, I actually cut it in half, so it's uh, a little bit smaller than it needed to be. But I then found that the sound was perhaps a little bit too thick, uh, so I put a collar around it, which is made from a piece of heat shrink tubing. And the effect of putting a collar around a microphone uh, like that is that it will increase the level of the treble sound so that it will become more, uh, more audible, uh, a sweeter sound rather than muffled. And uh, that's been in, that technique's been in use for years. This uh, microphone, late 60s, early 70s, is a dynamic microphone uh, made to hang around your neck or to clip onto a pocket, one of the early Lavalliers. But what you could do there was to push this collar forward and it raised the collar over the top of the, uh, the microphone capsule so that the treble sound is increased when it's on the body and would otherwise perhaps be concealed by clothing and be too deep. So the technique of putting a collar around is, uh, is quite an old one uh, and it's not electronic, it's a simple thing. My heat shrink tubing can be moved up and down so that I can actually tune it to the sort of level of treble that I want. Now like other microphones, this will have its sound changed a bit if I put on um, a foam windshield. And so this is the 285 with the foam windshield. A little bit softer sound there, you've lost a bit of the sharpness of the treble but it's still enhanced a bit. And again it will be changed uh, depending on where you put it on the chest. Now the great thing of having your capsule below the level of your surrounding case is that it stops a bit of the wind getting to it and these microphones are actually quite good in terms of uh, not responding uh, unfavorably to breath pops and things like that. So this is the Primo 258. This microphone capsule costs about £5.50 in the UK at the moment so for £6 or so you can buy the capsule uh, you can make the shell for virtually nothing from an old uh, plug casing. So let's move on now to look at the Primo cardioid microphone capsules. The first one, the one that I've got at the moment, is the Primo 264, which has a signal to noise ratio of 74 dB and is a little lighter in its sound because the uh, frequency curve drops off quite rapidly uh, towards the bass end from uh, about 300 hertz. So uh, you have to be a bit more careful how you use this. So I've lifted it a little bit on my chest so that it gets a little bit more of the bass sounds as well. Now at the moment uh, I'm wearing a, a foam windshield on this which does affect the sound a little bit. So if I take that off you'll hear what the sound of the microphone is like itself. So this is the slightly sharper sound you get uh, when you use the microphone without a windshield. Now because this is a two-wire microphone it outputs uh, a negative phase signal which means that the signal is a little bit lighter than it would be if it were a three-wire microphone and uh, you can compensate for that if you need to by going into inverted phase. So if I now uh, go into inverted phase on the mixer, so that's inverted phase and you'll hear now that it is a very 
much more deeper, richer sound uh, than the uh, normal recording because we've now transferred the negative phase back into a positive phase. So it gives you the full richness of the sound. I'll go back now to the uh, ordinary recording, which uh, most people will be using without changing, but you can change it in the edit afterwards. You don't have to do it when you record. So this microphone has a signal to noise ratio of 74 dB, which is pretty quiet and uh, quite good directional characteristics. So if we check that, speaking into the top, speaking into the back, the side and the front. So speaking 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's the Primo 264 uh, and that costs uh, about um, £15. Pounds. Uh, in addition to that, of course, you have to buy the uh, the housing, which uh, costs about £6, and the cable and your socket for the end of it. The Primo 264. So let's now move on and look at the Primo 182, which is a more expensive version. I now want to move on to have a look at another Primo cardioid microphone, the Primo 182. Now this microphone is a three-wire connected microphone, so it outputs a positive phase. In order to connect that, you either need a power pack like this to drive the microphone and enable a three-wire connector to be uh, placed into it, or you can plug it into your radio transmitter with a similar connection. But of course you can also convert it to a two-wire microphone if uh, you wish to do that, and that will increase its uh, output. Uh, the microphone itself actually outputs a little bit less than the Primo 264, but only about 4 dB, so there's nothing significant there, particularly since this has a very, very high signal-to-noise ratio. Now, at the moment, I'm using this with a windshield fairly high up on my chest, so that uh, you can hear what it sounds like when you've got some protection. If we take that off, the sound will be a little bit different, but before I do that, I just want to show you the directional characteristics. So if I, if I take the microphone off and turn it round, then there's very little sound gets in through the back of the microphone, a little bit in the side, but it really needs to be uh, directed towards the mouth in order to get the proper sound. So at the moment I've placed this fairly high on my chest in order to get some of the bass sounds because the microphone itself uh, is actually quite thin. The bass uh, it rolls off uh, over quite a long way from about 600 hertz right down to uh, about 50 hertz. And uh, down to 80 hertz, the bass has rolled off a whole 14 dB of gain. So it's 14 dB less at 80 hertz than it is at uh, 700 or 800 hertz. On the other hand, right at the other extreme, the treble is boosted by about 6 dB with a peak at about uh, 12,000 hertz. So a little bit sharper on the top end and not much bass in the bottom. Now that is not necessarily a bad thing because it means if you're using it on the chest as you normally are, it doesn't emphasise the deep chesty sounds, particularly of a man. And also you can put it beneath clothing and still get quite a decent recording because it's fairly sharp. Now let's have a listen to the microphone without the fur windshield, without the foam windshield. So leaving it in the same place on my chest, this is a slightly crisper sound because the foam windshield isn't causing muffling. And I'll move this a little bit further down now so that you can judge the sound of that. So this is on the third button, which is generally regarded as the sweet spot for most uh, microphones of this type. So what do you think of the Primo microphone capsules? You do have to build your own, although uh, one of the English dealers will actually uh, build the 172, which is the one I'm wearing at the moment, and that retails uh, in 2020 for about £35, built with uh, a 3.5mm jack plug on the end of it. Uh, for my money, I think the 172 is a very good microphone. Uh, there's not a vast amount of handling noise, 
They're a little bit sensitive to the wind because it's a standard microphone capsule. But as you can see here, I'm not wearing a windshield and there's no problem with breath noise. Uh, positioning is all important. Put it a little bit higher to get a little bit deeper and more personal sound. But they also work uh, much lower down, uh, even below the third uh, shirt button. A lighter sound there, different sound, but if you want to get levels to capture two people with one microphone, then you can place it uh, in a lower position. So I hope you found the Primo uh, microphone discussion useful. The thing to remember is, of course, that uh, the two-wire microphones will output a, a signal which is in negative phase, so you may want to change that into normal phase by flicking a switch on your mixer or inverting it in the edit, which is just a click of a button. The Primo microphone capsules are on sale in America and in the UK, and I'll put the links below.